Hey guys, so it's 20 degrees out this morning, getting ready to pour a floor. Fingers, just got done shooting grades, fingers are frozen already, even with gloves on. Got my uh, Milwaukee heated jacket on. This thing works really, really good. So uh, definitely recommend that if you guys work out in the cold, but we're just getting ready to go. Got putting calcium in the truck. He's got 135 degree hot water today, so we're putting some flake bag in him. And this is what we got right here. We got a 36 by 28 floor to get done today. But it's 20 degrees right now. It's only going to get up into about 35 today, so we'll see how this thing sets up. Hey guys, Mike here. So it's a very chilly morning and we're trying to get this floor done. This is how we make money in the winter. It's December now and you know, there's no snow on the ground, but a lot of times by now we'll even have snow on the ground. But we still gotta make money, we still gotta work. So a lot of the foundations, you know, done in the winter are covered. You know, the foundations are covered to keep freezing. Then they get them backfilled, then they get the floor prepped hopefully the subgrade under the floor doesn't freeze you know if it does then we just gotta wait for them to either put the house on this build it deck it heat it whatever they need to do as long as we're not pouring on frozen subgrade but this one this one they got uh, all backfilled they got the styrofoam down we got the poly down this morning and we're getting the floor in but it's cold and you know it's difficult it's difficult to make money this time of year Typically, we could pour something like this when it's warmer, leave one guy here to finish. Two of us could go do another job and get two jobs done today. But in wintertime, that's, that just is really, really hard to do. So, you know, it's hard enough just to, to be outside <laughs> when it's this cold, honestly, for an extended period of time. And then on top of that, having to run a power trial, do your edges, get it sawed, and just hope number one that it it gets trialed before it gets too dark it gets dark here really really early about early about 4 p.m. so it's just a battle against a bunch of different elements and you know we've done it for a long long time so we're kind of used to it but it, it still doesn't make it any easier what about you guys you know when you get into the winter months if you even have winter months do you have to deal with these same types of things does it make it much more difficult for you to make money um, I mean, we just we'll if we can just make enough just to keep going, you know, keep the money coming in, keep the money going out for payroll, paying the bills. That's that's kind of a bonus. And then during the eight or nine months where it's it's really nice weather, you know, that's when we really got to hustle and you know make some profits, put some money away, et cetera, et cetera. So let me know what you guys do if you do something similar to us. If you have a different way of attack in the winters do you like to just pack up for your your month or two or three and uh, come back when it's warmer or what what do you guys normally do let me know Switching that shoot around like that is a neat little trick that we've been doing for a really long time. You know, when you're pouring over a wall like this, it's it's pretty fast actually, and it keeps the concrete from splattering, from dropping too far. And as you can see, I can rotate that back and forth a little bit without it falling falling off. It it won't really fall off because it's hooked on those tabs, um, and it's pretty tight on there, so it just it rotates back and forth pretty easy. And you can dump, you can see, you can dump quite a bit of concrete pretty fast that way. So we use that a lot. We've also got, we've got kind of like a boot we can hook on there if we need to. Almost like on those conveyor trucks you've seen us use. And we'll use that over the wall quite a bit too. But for this case right here, it was just quicker. We knew he was almost out. Just to flip the chute, get him empty. 
and then get that second truck started to mix up so we could get the first one out of the way. I can tell you, you know, for me personally, the the part of my body that gets cold the, the fastest is my fingertips. Doesn't matter what I'm wearing for gloves. Um, I mean, thicker gloves help, but then that makes it harder to grab onto like the mag float right there or even the straight edge. So we tend to wear a little bit thinner gloves. But for me, it's the fingers that go first. I've, I've got, like I said, I got that heated jacket on like you saw earlier, and I got that now underneath this pullover hoodie. So that really helps keep my body warm. I've actually got those pants I'm wearing, the insulated pants. So my legs aren't too bad, really. My feet aren't too bad because the, the concrete's hot, so that keeps your, your toes pretty warm. So it's pretty much just the fingers. You know, you're grabbing onto that cold, cold metal, whether it's the rake, the screed, the bull float, that stuff's all ice cold. Even though we keep the trucks in the garage during the night, um, one garage is kind of heated and the other one isn't, so the tools still get really, really cold. But at this point right here, I could barely feel my fingertips, so I, I'm going to go in in a minute. I don't know if you'll, you'll notice it, but notice in the video a little bit later, I'm going to have a different set of gloves on. So I got my truck running. And I got the gloves underneath the heater, so I'll go in and take these gloves off, put on the, those really warm gloves, and that's going to help out a ton for me to get this second truck poured. Alright, we got that first truck dumped out. We went about halfway. Seven yards right there. Got another seven coming right there. It's freezing. My, my fingers are frozen right now. We'll get her though. It's the time of year. Just gotta deal with it. Thank God we're pouring on styrofoam though. The styrofoam's gonna help set up. Plus all the hot water and the, and the flake bag cow we're using. So I'll update you on uh, just when we get done power towing. But we got this second truck to pour right now. Now Luke can't stand wearing gloves when he's working. I don't know how he does it, but he'll uh, he'll start off wearing some gloves and then he'll throw them right off and then he'll just work with his bare hands like that. Those handles right there, they're they are ice cold right now. So he's uh, somehow he's dealing with it. I guess he's a heck of a lot tougher than I am in this cold weather. But I'm up there right now. I'm helping get that second truck mixed. Probably already grabbed my, my warm gloves, putting them on, trying to get my fingers unthawed and uh just glad that we're half done and, and we're only going to take another 10 15 minutes to get the rest of this in Just 
So we're starting on this end up by the wall and cause, because we don't want to have to jump out over the wall afterwards and finish up over by this eight foot wall. So we want to finish up on the walkout end. So we're going to start with the second truck here, get him. We'll just keep backing him up until uh, we got a hook on our mini chute. And then we'll hope, hope we'll have enough poured in here without getting too much, making too much of a mess so we don't take too much out. You can see how nice and fast that stuff flows though. <clears throat> that concrete is pretty warm. It's probably, the concrete temperatures are probably in the 70s even though the water is about 130. And we got a high range water reducer in it so we can, you know, pour it pretty flowable. Get it to pull around pretty easy and it slides pretty good on that, that plastic. We also got fiber mesh in here. You know, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that we use fiber mesh in everything. All the GCs pretty much that we work for go for the fiber mesh. It's been a real struggle to get wire this year. Even, you know, not so not so bad rebar, but sometimes even rebar is scarce. We've had to switch from the metal rebar to the fiberglass rebar because that just seems a little more plentiful when we need rebar on jobs. But for these floors, inside inside walls like this, as long as the sub base is good and compacted and it's not going to settle, floor's not going to go anywhere. So we just, fiber mesh is plenty of reinforcement for something like these. Yeah, there's that boot we were going to use over the wall, but we decided just to flip the chute instead. Oh, we got most of it poured right out. We'll get that leveled by eye and then we'll hook the chute on, get a little bit more poured out so we can screed it. We don't like just dumping a little bit. We like dumping a lot of it, getting it most most of it leveled out and then getting it screeded. It only takes minutes really to screed something like this. So the quicker we get this stuff down and out, the less likely it's going to start setting up in the drum of the truck. I've never really took the concrete temps inside the drum. I ought to do that. I got one of those infrared th thermometers like, it's almost like a gun shoot you can shoot out a red beam and it tells you the temps I, I've shown that on a previous video but if uh, if you want to check that out you can uh, you can check out my previous video I'll have it linked at the end of this one those are really good for knowing the concrete temps and sometimes that's a good idea to know because if the temps are 70 then you got X amount of time to pull the concrete out usually get it poured out and screeded if the concrete temp is 80, that's good to know because you get less time. It's actually going to start setting up on you. are going to lose slump a lot quicker if it's 80 versus if it's 70. So that's one of the reasons we check. We also like to know from the batchman, you know, what temperature did he have the boiler set at for the water? Does he, like today, he had it set at 130. If it's going to be even colder than this, he'll bump it up to 150, 160. Those things are really good to know too before the before you start mixing accelerator in it. We tend to use, on most jobs with trucks that have seven to 10 yards on them, we'll put two bags of flake cal in, two 50 pound bags. If it's under seven, then we'll go with at least one, sometimes one and a half, depending on how much under seven yards it is. We like the flake a lot better because it tends to just set up quicker with flake. The liquid cal is okay. But in my experience over the years, it just doesn't work as good as the flake. And then let's say for some reason, they put the liquid cal in at the plant when they batch the truck. What if the you know truck gets stuck in traffic? What if he breaks down? What if one guy mix, uh, spins his drum a little faster than the other on the way to the job? You know, with that liquid cal in it, it can be kind of unpredictable. So we like to be able to control the accelerator and Luckily, this company here we, we're using doesn't mind if we use Flake Cal. I know some companies out there won't even let you use it, but we, uh, we've always been able to use it, so I guess we're kind of lucky that way.
or you could just hear the concrete right there you, you know scraping on the screed it's uh slumps changing quite a bit in just a matter of minutes it just doesn't take long the styrofoam underneath you know even though the poly's on it it just helps hold the heat in the concrete and you know if you guys don't know concrete concrete sets up with heat i mean that's part of the chemical reaction that takes place when the cement and the water mix they it creates heat and that's what helps set up the concrete and if if that heat is low meaning concrete temperatures are low then that setup process takes a long long time if this had no hot water in it if it had no accelerator in it it would literally literally you you wouldn't power travel this for 10 or 12 hours anyway in and, and maybe not even till the next day on temperatures like this it may end up just freezing because it's just not going to create enough heat on its own when it's in the mid 20s or even around 30 to set up you really gotta you really gotta give it a kick in the pants as we say or a punch in the mouth to start with to get the set time started now I could tell right here when I when I was doing this bow floating off from the first truck this was between the first truck and the second truck right there that the first truck was already starting to set up some you could just feel it in the bow float and then as I got off that first truck and kept bow floating you know it was it was quite a difference in just how it felt already but that's how fast this stuff was setting up so we always hustle quite a bit when we when we trying to put these things in especially this time of year you it's it's a really bad feeling when that stuff's setting up and you haven't even got it screeded you know you're just walking in it and you can tell you're your boot print doesn't even fill back in with the concrete because the concrete's so stiff and then you still have to screed it down it's uh... It, it, you know it's not a good feeling that's happened to us plenty of times over the years i've had times when i've even you know pouring like this i've had to get up and walk on the previous load and i was barely sinking in that's how hard it was set up just to get it screeded <laughs> um, and then we've had times when the guy's actually been power trialing on that first load while we're still screeding right next to it. So it's just, you know, those were bigger jobs, more commercial jobs back in the day. But it's it's never fun when you have to screed on top of a, what we call a cold joint like that. And it's very hard to get the cold joint nice and flat like it would if you were doing it when it's all good and plastic like this. Well, that's it, all poured, 14 yards, about 25 degrees out right now, getting him washed up, he'll be out of here in a minute. Again, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you on the next one.